massive part of feeder fishing is ground bait. We use ground bait all the time, no matter what we're targeting. You know, often obviously bream skimmers, but obviously the roach, all sorts of different species that we target with feeder fishing. That obviously stems into choice of mix, and that can it's almost an endless subject, and everybody's all got their own favourites for different venues and all that sort of thing, but maybe that's something for another time. As regards mixing the ground bait, that tends to be the same process. For me, I love to use a nice shallow round bowl. Lots of anglers out there use drills and whisks to mix ground bait, but I know the vast majority of anglers don't. If you do use a drill and a whisk, obviously the, the consistency can be a little bit better, but obviously you've got the bulkiness of carrying a drill with you and all that sort of thing. And I know a lot of you are going on natural venues like I do, you might have a long walk to your peg, and I like to cut down my kit. But the other reason for that is, on a lot of venues that we're fishing, certainly the natural venues, we're only mixing two, three pints of ground bait when you feed a fishing. That's the beauty of ground bait um, feeder fishing. You're not using much bait. So if you're only mixing two or three pints, it's quite easy just to mix it on the morning at your peg. Nice shallow bowl like this, a round one's best obviously because there's no corners in it. I've just got about a pint of ground bait there. Add your water a little bit at a time. That is one of the key things because if you put too much in, you can't take it out and then you ruin your mix. And let's face it, ground bait isn't cheap to buy. So the last thing you want to do is start wasting it. Just add it a little bit at a time. Mix it round. Just so that you're distributing that water around the mix the best you can. And don't rush it. That is one of the key aspects. Don't rush your ground bait. When you get to your peg, this is going to need a minimum of 20 minutes just to absorb the, you know, the maximum amount of water it can absorb. So when you get to your peg, the first thing you should do if you're using ground bait is mix your ground bait then because then it's going to give it plenty of time so that it's going to be right and finished for the start of the match. So just add a little bit at a time. I'm just going to add a little bit more. Just distribute the water around it the best you can. It's already gone darker and you can feel it's damp to the touch. What I will do with that now is I'll simply put that to one side for about 20 minutes and then I'll revisit it. It may need some more water, but obviously how that is now, that needs to soak in the water that I've added. So I'm going to put that to one side for 20 minutes, set up my kit, that is what I normally do, that is my routine for a match. Come back to it in 20 minutes, add some more water to it if I need to, and, um, and then we're going to be putting it through a riddle or a sieve and that'll get rid of those lumps. So we'll take another quick look at this in a moment. I'll give it 20 minutes to soak up some more water and, uh, and then put it through a, a sieve. Well that's had about 20 minutes just to absorb the rest of that water. When I came back to it, it had obviously dried out a little bit so I've just added a little bit more water to it, not too much, and then I put it through a sieve. One thing that you really need to think about when you're doing this is don't over wet it straight away and just don't ruin the mix by rushing it. If you're going to be fishing with chopped worm, for example, you're going to be adding um, worm and worm juice into this mix as well. So if that is the, you know, the method that you're going to be using, then don't overwet your mix because that is obviously going to be adding more moisture to this, which means it's not going to be the finished mix that you actually want. So if you're going to be putting lots of worm through, like we do when we're bream fishing and skimmer fishing, um, then you might want to leave this just slightly on the dry side so that when you add the worm, it's going to even it out so it's going to be just right. All I'll do now is what I always do, I tend to, I keep some on my side tray, but I always keep some back. That's just a key thing that I learnt years and years ago as a kid. Always keep a little bit back. I'm sat out in the water today, so I want some out there on the bait tray, obviously for fishing with, but always keep some back in your bag because accidents do happen. And if you was to knock that over and that's your full mix gone, then that could ruin your match. So what I'll do is I'll just get out on the box and I'll show you how I store this on my side tray. Right, I've mixed the ground bait on the bank. Like I said, I've split it into two, so half of this is still in my bag there. Obviously, that will stop any... It's a bit of an insurance policy against any accidents. So that's in there. Obviously, I've mixed this ground bait and you want it to stay exactly how you want it. Having a, a bait, a side tray with something like this that's going to cover it up. You never know what the British weather's going to throw at you, so that'll help you keep the ground bait just how you want it if conditions change. I like to have it right at the front of my bait tray that's just pure preference because it means I can take little bits of bait out of these other tubs into the ground bait and then fill my feeder and um, fill it there. The other key aspect that I always like to do is have a tub of water right next to it as well 
it's obviously handy to have water on your bait tray anyway if you're using other baits you might just want to wash your hands but the main reason is this mix is what I would consider to be a medium mix okay so it's not really dry so it's going to be fizzing in the water and everything you know we're feeder fishing at the end of the day so you obviously want fish down on the deck but what I will do at certain stages during a match is I might want to over wet this mix slightly Talking about ground baits is something obviously that would warrant a video on its own, but there are certain um, consistencies of ground bait at certain stages of a match that you can get your extra fish and over wetting your, your mix is one of them. So I always have a tub of water just there because I can simply just take some water out of there, just put it into one little corner. I can petition part of the bait tray, um, sorry, the side tray ground bait there. I can partition that off just over wet that little portion of the corner so I'm not ruining the whole mix I can fill the feeder and if it actually works I can obviously over wet some more of the mix but if I cast out with that over wet mix and it doesn't work I've only mixed a tiny little corner of that mix so I haven't wasted the rest of it I can go back to the original mix but it's just about keeping it where it's obviously nice and comfortable and easy to get to for refilling your feeder keeping it nice and dry keeping it exactly how it is and obviously when that runs out i can always top up from the you know the reserve um ground bait that i've got on the bank just top it up and that way that's that's sealed it's to stay nice and fresh it's not in the wind it's not in the rain it's not going to dry out that should stay because it's in a sealed bag it'll stay just how i mixed it so i can just simply top that up at any stage